the great great grandfather problem of thyroid problems is blood sugar problem. Blood sugar problems create adrenal problems. They like said about the kidneys, the adrenal glands. Adrenal problems create thyroid problems. And then the whole host of hormonal imbalances that create perimenopause, menopausal symptoms, hot flashes, moodiness, cramping, achy joints, achy stiff joints, you can't lose weight, you've done everything. And where is the weight? It's here, women. I know, I'm one. <laughs> I don't have a stress-free life. It's here, back here, it's all around your internal organs. Because again, where would the body put fat to be used the most efficiently for life, not for anything other than just to live, if there was an emergency situation? It would put it around the internal organs. And we call that little pot belly a cortisol belly. I have one, I went through school. <laughs> it's stressful. You have life events, things happen. But if you start to balance out that blood sugar, it will go away. Crunches, forget it. You have to balance that out. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you know you want some muscle mass on your body. Because when you have that, you can just be sitting. And your metabolism is running a little bit faster than it normally would. I've read everything from six calories more per hour up to like 90 calories more per hour. It depends on who you have. But you are going to have a little bit faster metabolic rate. And if you're in a stressed out situation through any of those you know, means that I named, your body's actually turned that lean muscle mass into fat, and your metabolism starts to get down. Now here's the kick that <laughs> It blew my mind. You do need some carbohydrates. And any top level athlete will tell you when they race, they don't carbo load they do strategic carbs. So top, top trainers, top, top weight loss coaches, can then biochemical nutritionists. They do tell you, eat some carbohydrate in your diet. The ones that I've recommended to you all on our shopping list are the best ones that you can just buy and get easily without having to go through some pain in the butt to make it. Sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. sprouted bread, winter squash, carrots, Sometimes potatoes. You do need some of those to help light that out of light. The perfect analogy that I learned in school to help me get this before we learned the biochemistry of it, the carbs are kind of like the kindling on the fire. Then you use the protein, they're kind of medium-sized logs to keep that fire going. And then fat are like the big logs you put on after you've got a really hot bed of coals that keep you going for a long time. And again, top-level athletes, they're not out there shooting goo, you know. They're out there with like almond butter and bone broth and their camelbacks, I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's for real. My teacher is the Olympic nutritionist for the test team. She's got a people on bone broth and hard and soft boiled eggs, cans of sardines and fish eggs. Very similar foods to what I have you guys eat. That's what they're eating, okay? It's increasing their metabolic rate, it's putting on muscle, they look good. You know, they look lean. Okay, anything else that I'm going to tell you guys right off the bat? Okay, here's another one. I've been telling you guys the whole time, eat. Eat the 1,500 calories. You know, try not to limit yourself. That's why I'm giving you some really healthy dessert recipes. Did you guys take the brunch muffin recipe? It's really good. It's a really good muffin. Like, I've had some hippie muffins that... <laughs> Like sawdust. <laughs> that one really is good. Okay. It's great. <laughs> With some butter on it. <laughs> if you have a long term <laughs> elevation of cortisol, you have a predominance of hormones that are released in a starvation mode. There's all kinds of them. You have lower aldosterone, is one that lowers, but most of them are higher. They're like emergency hormones. What are they going to tell you to do when you're around food? Eat. So what happens? We've all done this too. I'm totally in this. You don't eat, you're strict, you're strict, you're strict. Maybe you go out to dinner, you have a couple beers, you get loosened up. All hell breaks loose. 
chips and salsa. Mexican food places, man, they have got it down. Like that marketing technique where you walk in and they just give you like the fried, like, the tomato, and the salty, and you just, all right? <laughs> After a couple of tacos. So that hormonal release will tell your brain, eat, 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 eat. eat. So if you haven't been maintaining a healthy, balanced eating pattern, and then you get around some food that, you know, maybe it's not even the best food. Like, God, sometimes I remember being in school and passing the, like, you know, snack vending machine. My body was just like, it was like I was a junkie. Because those hormones are strong. They're trying to keep you alive. It used to be if you were in a food shortage and you were starving, you couldn't go out and get a taco bar at 3 a.m. But now you can. And it's around you all the time. So the tendency to overeat so much higher if you have that long-term stress from not eating, over-exercising, Do you guys have questions? It's a lot. I just laid a lot down on you guys, but does it make sense? Yeah. Um, if it doesn't fit here, you can answer it another time, but I was wondering about cholesterol, because I have high cholesterol, and I'm not sure it's something I've been working on. And I've been reading about it today, yeah. just waiting. <laughs> I'm with eggs and I Can you tell me what your cholesterol is? Um, last year, I think it was 222, and this year it was 212. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So my cholesterol runs about 215. I'll tell you the story after class, but I have a friend whose cholesterol is like off the charts, and he is like the most strapping, beautiful specimen you ever see. <laughs> Here's the deal with cholesterol. Cholesterol is a healing agent. And technically, in chemistry, it's heavy molecule alcohol. It heals the body. Why does it go up? Something's wrong, right? Or something is really, really right, and your cholesterol maintains. It sounds like maybe something was a little wrong, and now it's going back down. If you have chronic inflammation or infection, which a lot of people do, and they don't even realize it, I did for years. I had a little surgery on my back. It kind of stayed infected the whole time. Finally, I went to the doctor. My cholesterol had gone. He was like, oh, there's an infection. So you may not even know. If you, oh, I'm not saying you, if one overeats carbohydrates or sugars, has a spike, it kind of looks like a snow cap mountain, doesn't it? <laughs> All of that can create inflammation which equals just little damage in the body. When that happens, there's a hormonal chain that starts that tells the liver, hey, release cholesterol, there's something wrong, we need an ambulance, basically. And it goes to that site, and it starts to patch things up with that cholesterol. So the HDL, LDL circus, you guys are familiar with that? Your HDL looks great, no problem. You know, you're, so there's like all these different High density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein, that's what that means. Forget it. We can talk about blood tests a little bit, but look, I don't start worrying about somebody's cholesterol when they come to see me unless other markers on their blood test show high inflammation or it's way, way high, like 280, 290, 300. Now, if they have a history of inflammatory disease, autoimmune disease, developmental illness, something extreme and their cholesterol keeps rising, we're going to check it out. But we never, ever recommend a statin. That's just making a number look good. That's the statin drug is this right here. You're eating the standard American diet, but I'm just going to pretend like you're not. <laughs> I just erase it and make it look better. It's the exact same, but I just made it look makes that number make you feel better. Maybe mentally it would help, but not physically. Physically it can just look intensely. We can talk more about you after this is done. When cortisol is high for a long period of time, it's like a little, you know, like all elements in the body have like a, they have like a, a biological like feeling. You know, there's like a way. Cortisol is like a little sand. 
blood is smooth and it should flow. It shouldn't be viscous. You know, it's like everything has like a characteristic in the body. So if that sand-like particle, or like little pieces of glass even you would think has had for a long time, if it's flowing through your blood for years and years, what is that doing to the walls of your arteries and veins? It's nicking, right? Well, what is what comes to help the arteries and veins? It's cholesterol. That is where heart disease comes from. Not from the fat and the eggs and the butter and the animal fats. That's the ambulance. It's like blaming the ambulance for the wreck. The problem is coming from the overconsumption of sweet foods, enriched breads, rancid oils, things that cause damage. And so your body with heart disease, its innate intelligence kicks in and it says, okay, you're either going to have an aneurysm today and you're going to have a blowout because of the damage, or I'm going to patch it and you're going to have blockage 10 years from now. I'll take the 10 years. <laughs> really, you have to heal the underlying cause of what's creating that damage. Can your body want to yeah, your, your body heal itself. Yes, your body is the most dynamic creation. I mean, I'm obsessed. You know, I'd love to say, but on planet Earth, you know, we can change in amazing ways. So it is possible. We can change a lot of things that we don't think we can change. Do you all have any other questions before I start going over the handout? Does it make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. okay. This isn't something I just came up with. <laughs> I wish I was that smart. But I've just been taught this way, and to me, it seems logical, and I've felt it in my body, and I wanted to know, well, why do I feel this in my body? But this isn't what I was learning when I was a nursing student. Dropped out of that <laughs> pretty quick in. I wasn't learning it in you know, just standard nutrition classes at university. I like, I was like, what is it? There's something that's not right. So this isn't just my wild hair creation. It's people are getting more and more educated about this way for metabolism. So the way to really get your metabolism up, look, my sheet, it's got bone broth on it. I put the bones on it in the cooking glass on it. Okay, so number one is to rest. It's always like, I tell them to rest so much. <laughs> you have to rest. You have to rest. How many of you just take a minute during your day and just sit down and just rest? I don't. I'm not raising my hand. I should. I'll like sit down and eat in front of my computer. I'm getting better. I'm trying to do what I'm telling you guys to do, which is to sit down and eat and not read. So you have to sleep at night, and you have to rest during the day. How many of you have problems sleeping? Like you can't go to sleep, you can't stay asleep. Okay. That has to do with this too. So as this starts to eat now, it's going to get better. Here's a trick for metabolism. Don't eat for 12 hours at night. From 7 to 7 or 8 to 8. 9, to 9 is a little late to eat. I've done it. You've, we've all done it. I ate at 11 the other night. I worked at Polly's Paladar up in Nevada City. Generally, if you can have that 12 hour break and give your body that break at night, you're going to see results. So, seven to seven is what I try and maintain. It will also help you sleep better if you don't have a gut full of food. Now, having a little snack or a little bite of something actually helps some people sleep better, especially people had long-term stress, I recommend maybe a small bowl of soup or a little bit of cheese before bed. You know, something small, but you have to rest and give yourself that 12 hours. Eat enough. So if you guys aren't eating that 1,500 <laughs> calories, eat it. Can you eat it with the right one? With the right, with the food. No, right. with Right, yeah. Cadbury's cream egg. Yeah. <laughs> I've been avoiding oh, since Easter. <laughs> after exercise? So, like when we're calculating on the fitness pal, if, if I eat 1,500 and then I exercise, it drops that down. Right, you need to eat 1,500 with exercise. Okay. You've got to keep that 